dock it. Spotify support indie artists by licensing their music. Woo hoo! So I think I mentioned this previously before in another episode, but I had this idea, right? Um, because I was talking to, or I was looking at um this company online, right? Um, who were kind of like you know helping people to buy back their data and exchange it in in in, in exchange it for um reward points and stuff, right? I was looking at that sort of privacy stuff and just kind of went into a bit of an insect rabbit hole. Then the lights kind of the the lights kind of clicked or and then or the light switched on whatever and i made some connections in my head and i figured out that you know kind of the record industry is so broken right with the 360 deals that you know um enable um some record labels to take a cut of everything the artist does from merch to ticket sales to tour to um bar and nightclub appearances that's what 360 deal does right because they saw that they weren't getting that much money from streaming so they decided to implement another contract that allowed them to get more money out of the artist now on the artist side of it they would argue that they get more money up front of course but they having to give more in the long run so you might get more of um uh, you might get more of a signing on bonus whatever it might be called right but then you still have to give the record company more of a cut of what you produce so I thought, um, especially nowadays with um, a lot of the artists coming from, you know, uh, platforms like Mixcloud or Soundcloud and stuff or Bandcamp, some of the independent artists, it would be great if some of those guys and some of the bigger guys especially could then license their music to different D DSPs, digital streaming platforms, and then license their product to those platforms, maybe for exclusive rights for a certain period of time, maybe have it, you know how Drake does or Beyonce you knows people have like, um, they'll at least their album exclusively on title, title for like a couple of weeks, then it'll go into other streaming platforms. I thought it wouldn't be amazing if you could license your album to a streaming platform instead of signing to a record label. Because you, nowadays you don't need record labels anyway. No one really is buying physical albums for the most part. Um, there are a small minority of people who are still buying physical albums, mostly people that drive cars and shit. Maybe it's not minority. Maybe there is a group of people out there, but for the most part, everything's kind of steering its way towards the digital revolution. Right, everything's kind of online, everything is about streaming, everything's about playlists. So why not just cater to that industry and license your music to Spotify or Apple Music or Tidal and then uh, receive um, a signing on bonus or some sort of percentage cut from the streams and also get given um, maybe preferential treatment when it comes to getting your stuff on playlists, when it comes to maybe um, using their in-house data analyst when it comes to maybe um, utilizing maybe some of their marketing team capabilities. There's loads of things that could kind of work in there. And then this article popped up in the New York Times, which kind of was so uh, coincidental with the things that I was thinking about, which says Spotify is doing the same sort of thing. So I'll read it now and I'll get up on the screen. I'll link in the show notes for you guys that are listening via Audible, via the audio experience. Um, so this, this uh, article in New York Times just came out the other day. A new Spotify initiative makes the big record labels nervous. So this article says the following. Um... For decades, the path to stardom in the record industry has usually gone through a major record company. Almost every uh, artist today who reaches the top of the charts, whether Kanye or Adele, Beyonce or Drake, has gotten there with help from one of the three conglomerates that control 8% of the business, which I didn't know that, right? Universal, Sony and Warner Brothers control 8% of the fucking record industry, which is crazy. New Spotify. Now Spotify is experimenting with another approach, one that is making the, the, those labels nervous. Over the, net, over the last year, the 12-year-old company has quietly struck a li direct licensing deal with a small number of independent artists. The deal gives those artists a way onto the streaming platform and a close relationship to the company, an advantage when pitching music for influential playlists while bypassing the major record labels altogether. That's amazing, right? Because nowadays, most music discovery, most people's music discovery comes from playlists. Not from me personally, because I still dig. I'm a little bit old school in that regard. God, or I still listen to whole albums and shit. But most people are discovering new artists through playlists, especially um, if you have um, continual play on enabled on your Spotify account, right? So if you listen to a playlist, it will just continue playing music until the end of time. And it will kind of like, you know, the algorithm will detect stuff that you like previously or stuff you listened to before and kind of give you stuff that's in the sort of kind of similar sort of vein. So imagine being able to sign license and deal with Spotify, get a little bit of money. And also have the advantage of maybe pitching your your music to playlists before anyone else can. Although the deals are modest, the article continues. Although the deals are modest, um, with advanced payments of tens of thousands of tens of tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, according to several people, so not millions, which is still good anyway, regardless. The record companies see um, Spotify initiative as a potential threat, a small step down the line that could reshape the music business as it is existed since the days of um, Victoria. I think this is great to hear because 
I've always said, right, that I've always kind of thought how annoying it must be if you're an artist who doesn't want to do merch, who doesn't really want to tour that much, maybe wants to do a few live gigs a year, but you have to do all this other stuff on the outside in order to make money because the stream platforms don't make that much money in terms of like, they don't, co they make money, but they don't make as much as they should. So if, if you get a thousand plays, you might get only a grand, right? Which doesn't make any sense. So I would always kind of have sympathy for the artist who doesn't want to do merch, just want to do music, but isn't getting enough money from the music. But this is, an, this is great because what it does is that it puts the onus back into the music itself. So if you're an artist who does want to do the whole like tickets, the whole like tickets to my show, um, buy you an album thing and do all that extra stuff and do a festival, sell merch, do a YouTube show or whatever it may be, right? Or do a hosting gig for Showtime or Bravo. That's all well and good. But I think for the guys that guys and girls who just want to concentrate on music, this is fucking amazing. It gives you opportunity to actually do the music, the thing that you actually put on this earth to do. You can do it and someone can pay you for doing it. And if you want to do a couple of teachers on the side, you can. But for now, you know, for the most part, it's a bit nauseating to see like every single artist has merch. Every single artist is doing a tour. Every single artist um, has some sort of like festival thing that they're trying to promote. Do you know what I mean everyone's doing the same thing because they're seeing not they're all not they're all not seeing enough returns from the music itself, so they're having to do these other extra endeavors. So it might be good that now we're kind of finally going to see a return to artists being able to concentrate on music, and in the end, it's going to help um, us, the customer, because we're going to then get music of a much higher caliber because they're not sitting there fucking around with Photoshop files trying to design a T-shirt as well to accompany an album cover. Um, Spotify's Stockholm company went public in April, has offered a few details about its entry into the talent marketplace. It has not revealed which artist it has made a deal with and declined to comment on this uh, article. According to six people in the industry uh, who have been briefed on recent deals but were not authorised to discuss them publicly, Spotify has paid advances to management firms and other companies represent artists who are not signed to record labels. For now, this means up-and-coming artists and all the artists who have gained control over their vintage hits. Which is great, right? So it's more up and coming, and the uh, and the kind of the older end of the of the artists who are kind of gonna um, get more from this. But what I like about this too is this um, move toward management firms and other companies. I've, I'm sure a lot of people have done that. I remember people looking into that. Is it 300? No, there's a company. There's a mysterious company that's called, sort of like behind Trippy Red and um, and uh, Six Nine. There's, I'm liking the move that these young kids are doing now, where they're getting management to kind of hire. They kind of they kind of get a management team in in place to manage their career instead of going run into a record label because that's what happened before right naive kids will go run to record labels in order to kind of like um actualize their dreams they were given a, an advance think that they're rich and then the record label would end up taking massive cuts of their budget because they're spending um all their money on fucking advertising on the radio but now they get management firms who are kind of clocked on kind of clued in into social media who are then going out and hiring freelancers to come and work on an album cover, work on a marketing idea, um, and all sorts of stuff. So they're effectively doing the job of the record company, but they're being a little bit more nimble. They're a little bit more. They're a little bit more quick to the punch. It's sort of like a. Imagine if a record label is a corporation. Um, these management firms are sort of like startups. They can quickly. Um, they can quickly put to market quick ideas like from initiate from the idea generation to execution they can quickly do it but if you're a record label it takes a long time to get that machine moving so i'm, I'm see i'm liking how where it's kind of going um an article continues spotify is offering artists two advantages a bigger financial cut and ownership of their recordings which is fucking crucial and it's absolutely nuts to think that artists nowadays don't have ownership of their own music. It doesn't make any sense. If you make your song and it's yours, you own the rights to it. But when you sign to record label, unfortunately, you give up the rights in order for you to get an advance that allows you to make more money. Now, that kind of like um, golden handshake was okay a few years ago, but now you don't need to. In, a, in, a, in an era of streaming where everyone's listening to singles anyway on streaming platforms, why you need a record label? You need a, you don't need a record label anymore because they they're going to package your, your, your work or your body of work as an album. When, when you might not necessarily, you might want it as an album or mixtape, but you might also want it to live on different platforms or just on different playlists. <coughs> So, the, um, and the article continues, so they get a bit of financial cut and ownership of their recordings. The deals, furthermore, are not exclusive, leaving the artists free to license their songs to other streaming companies in, um, uh, like Apple Music and Amazon, which is another key ingredient. Some record labels don't allow you to go on radio interviews with some, with some stations because they don't have good relationship with them. Imagine how stupid that is, right? A record label won't let you go on a certain radio station because they don't like the presenter or because they've had bad blood with them because of an ex-artist who had nothing to do with you. But with this, you get a bigger financial cut, you get ownership of your recordings signing a license deal to a streaming platform and you also you also get the the chance to put your music on different platforms. I'm sure, of course, if Spotify is really good to you, there's sort of going to be like an unwritten agreement that you should stick to the people who are kind of like buttering your bread and people that have been good to you anyway and not whoring yourself out of there. 
that should be one example. But for the most part, that kind of ease of mind of knowing that you're not being handcuffed into a situation that you don't necessarily fully understand or you're not necessarily fully sold on, because I'm sure a lot of artists would be like a bit on the fence about the whole thing. This is crucial, absolutely crucial. Um, it continues, Spotify typically pays a record label around 52% of the revenue generated by each stream or play of a given song. So imagine they give 52% to a record label, right? Imagine what record label 52% they give to the artist. Probably like two. Uh, the label in turn pays the artist a royalty of anywhere 15% um, in, su to, in some cases 50% of its cut. By agreeing to the direct licensing deal with Spotify, the artist and the representative are able to keep the whole payout, which is fucking insane. The Coast Company has come to make an ambitious public as during an earnings call in July where Daniel Elk, the company's chief executive, um, confirmed reports in Billboard elsewhere that Spotify has pursuing a direct deals with independent artists. Um, that's amazing. Um, and he continues, I think he says, licensing content does not make us a label, nor do we have any interest in becoming a label. We don't own rights and any music and we're not acting on the record label. That's amazing. You don't need record labels anyway, man. Fuck record labels. Um, bin them. Burn them all to hell. Um, license your music to streaming platforms. Uh, get a bigger cut of your earnings. Keep your keep your keep your masters keep your recordings keep a full ownership of it even if you don't make that much money on streams the fact that you own your music and you're able to do whatever you want with it is the best thing of that like, you can do with your music overall so i'm happy to see it um, happening this article is called a new spotify initiative makes a new big record labels nervous uh, 